Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. And the big news this week, Tony Blair flew to Washington for a state visit to the White House after being personally invited by George Bush. Although the actual words used were, here boy, here boy, come on. <laughs> During Tony Blair's visit to Washington, he and George Bush discussed Africa for hours before George finally grasped the notion that it's that big hot place across the sea where Tarzan lives. <laughs> <laughs> After the talk to Blair, George Bush pledged to make the world a better place. So if I was in Iran, I'd be shitting myself right now. <laughs> Tonight, working their way to a series of satirical games as six of the country's finest comedy performers, Andy Parsons, Roy Bremner and Mark Steele, Joe Brand, Hugh Dennis and Frankie Boyle, welcome to you all. <laughs> Let's kick off tonight with a round called Headliners. I show the teams a photo of someone who's been making the news this week along with the initial letters of a newspaper headline. The teams have to tell me what the letters stand for. This one's for both teams. Here's a picture of Saddam Hussein. So what does STWM stand for? Saddam twinned with Mordor. <laughs> a bit of dating video, sad tyrant wants mate. <laughs> Is it uh, Saddam talks West Midlands? He's used, <laughs> He's used his time in captivity to develop a Birmingham accent. <laughs> There was a thing in the papers uh, when Saddam's two sons were executed, killed, or uh, whatever it was, and... The, <laughs> what's the word? Beheaded. <laughs> yeah. But there was a thing in the papers that said that they spoke English with a Yorkshire accent because they'd learnt English off a Yorkshireman, which I thought, of all the lies told... Was, but <laughs> at the start of the war, where they go, they'll fire now to wear chemical weapons around these parts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead worried about father like what with them having to move out and all that living in door where we tried to <laughs> we've applied to We've applied to council for a ramp, but they won't give in and like it won't take a day off, I'll give up. <laughs> Is it um, saviour of the women's movement? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Is it sorry, Tony, weapons missing? No. Um... Or is it just simply Saddam thinks, why me? <laughs> the answer is Saddam's trial within months. It's pretty clear Saddam is going to be found guilty, but there's a lot of debate about how long he'll go down for. My guess is about four feet before the rope goes tight. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, joke, that joke was so contrived that, it, that people feel sympathy for Saddam. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've never liked him, but after that joke, I thought bloody sorry for it. <laughs> if you've been affected by any issues raised in this program... <laughs> Saddamulike.com. Uh, <laughs> if Saddam is found guilty, the prosecution wants him to hang, whereas the defence say he should spend the rest of his life in prison. Well, hang him. Then he will have done. <laughs> going on trial, isn't he, with his, uh, his cousin, Chemical Alley, and there's, you know, debates as to whether it's going to be a fair trial or not. I have to say the chance of you getting a fair trial when you're called Chemical Alley... <laughs> ..does seem to be a little limited. <laughs> I'm no lawyer, but I would have thought the first question should be, why are you called Chemical <laughs> Alley? <laughs> Please, then, for that and for many other reasons, uh, this team are the winners. Uh, Mark, Roy and Andy. The next round is called Between the Lines. Rory and Hugh, can you make your way to the Mock the Week press pit? In this round, one player takes the role of a famous person making a speech, while the other says what they really mean. So, Rory, you are Prince Charles giving a speech on the occasion of his mother's birthday. Hugh, tell us what he's really saying. Take it away. Um, hello, Mummy. <laughs> Gosh, you look so well. Blast. <laughs> <laughs> um, a little birdie tells me... It's all over the newspapers. <laughs> but today is a very special day. You're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I, I, I don't know how you do it. I don't know why you do it. <laughs> you just seem to go on and on. And on and on. <laughs> and on. I'm sure uh, I speak for the rest of the family um, when I say... Um, uh, we hope... It's very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> what, what do you do? I make organic biscuits. Oh, wonderful. Well, <laughs> well, marvellous, marvellous. That's true. Um, so I've lost the thread now. Um, <laughs> anyway, we hope you have a lovely day. Oh, looking forward to the 21 gun salute. They're loaded. Reverend <laughs> Roy and you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. For both of you that day. Time to move on now to a round called Stand Up, Sit Down, which involves everybody. So if you could all make your way over to the performance area, please. This is a stand-up challenge based on a random news generator dotted with topical subjects and faces. We spin the wheel, and when it stops, anyone can step forward and try to make us laugh over the subject it's landed on. If I judge the player has got a big enough laugh, he or she is safe and gets to sit down again. The first team to have all its players sitting down at the desk wins the round. OK, here we go. Here's the first topic. First of it is climate change. He was in like a shot. The problem with climate is that we're ruining the environment. You know, um, every year we destroy an area of rainforest the size of Belgium. Why not just destroy Belgium? <laughs> <laughs> no one would mind. We're, we're desperate to find an alternative to oil. Um, wind is one, but what worries me about wind power is that um, if you cover Britain with 400,000 wind turbines, right, on a windy day, what's to stop the whole country taking off? <laughs> like, an <enorm> <laughs> like an enormous hovercraft and heading for France. <laughs> that is European unification by the back door. <laughs> Very good, Hugh. Hugh, sit down. Congratulations. Very good. <laughs> so, let's have another topic. Live 8, Rory's coming in like a shot. Uh, yes, it's Live 8 this week. Uh, Bob Geldof's big thing was to persuade people to go to Edinburgh by f***ing boat. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go, OK, because the first 20 miles are easy, the rest you're going to carry the f***ing boat on your shoulders. <laughs> they're, trying to get, it's, it's, they're trying to get a million people up to Edinburgh. Elton John's not going, he's sending flowers. Um, <laughs> and it's a whole G8 Live 8 thing where the world's richest eight nations get to meet the world's uh, eight richest rock stars. <laughs> Rory, well done, sit down. <laughs> Let's have another topic. OK, reality TV, who wants to get in? Uh, me. Oh, hang on. <coughs> Just a second, though. <laughs> <laughs> Twelve calories. Um, <laughs> Well, you probably realise that the 487th series of Big Brother has just started. <clears throat> Problem to me with Big Brother is that when someone gets voted out of the house, they don't actually have a sniper up in a tree <laughs> with one bullet, just to see how they do. <laughs> now, I actually applied for Celebrity Love Island, but... Um... <laughs> You, know, you can sit down now if you want to. That's just, uh... <laughs> OK, three comics left. What's the next topic? Ah, the London Olympic bid. Mark is in. We can't have the Olympics in London. No-one will be able to get there. If we do have it in London, we should have a special London triathlon where you have to get a 133 down Brixton Hill to Stockwell and then a Northern <laughs> Line to London Bridge. <laughs> And then a network southeast back to East Croydon. If you can do that in less than six and a half hours, you deserve a gold bloody medal. <laughs> well done, Mark. Good time. Good time. Congratulations. <laughs> right, two contestants left, one on each team. We have a tie-break situation. I'm going to spin the wheel one more time. I want the two remaining players, Andy and Frankie, to go head-to-head -head on the same topic. The subject is the United States. Andy, you want to go first? <laughs> 
For those of you who were disappointed uh, at the American election, don't be. Americans do love their guns, which is why six out of 43 US presidents have been shot. <laughs> so we still have a one in seven chance of getting rid of the idiot, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Of course, George Bush and Tony Blair, they're always going, aren't they? Oh, well, we live in a much safer world without Saddam Hussein. I'm not sure I didn't prefer the more dangerous world with Saddam Hussein, <laughs> a world when you could get on a train, see an unattended package, and think, crikey, I'm having that. <laughs> Good work from Andy. Frankie, it's up to you now. Well, I've, I've got nothing against American people. I mean, you meet them and they're always very cheerful, aren't they? I often think we should be more heavily medicated as a society. <laughs> but the, the American government has this deliberate pose of stupidity. It's an act. So they're in Iraq at the minute going, I don't know why we invaded Iraq. We can't find any weapons of mass destruction. Everywhere we dig, we keep striking oil. <laughs> And, and George Bush is the epitome of that. I mean, you look at him and the wheel's spinning, but the hamster's dead. <laughs> I think we're at uh, close to close. I'm going to give to Andy and the Andy team here as well. Welcome to Andy. Mark, Roy and Andy are the winners. Our next round is called, If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? On the board are six categories relating to current events. For each category, I read out an answer and the players have to guess what the question might be. Andy, do you want to choose? Yes, I would like famous people, please. Famous people is a category. The answer is bold and brave. What is the question? Is it, uh, how would you describe the crazy frog given that he wears a crash helmet but no underpants? <laughs> Is it, what do you have to be to say wrong number to Russell Crowe? <laughs> what sort of washing powder did they use at Custer's last stand? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Is it what you would describe anybody who goes into an NHS hospital for a routine operation? <laughs> Is it, what are David Beckham's pet names for his testicles? <laughs> 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 I'll give you a clue. It's to do with the watery protest. Oh, uh, it's, it's about sailate. But yes, it is indeed. Uh, the question is, how did Bob Geloff describe the sailors who will take part in Sail 8? Here's a picture of Bob uh, sitting. <laughs> he knows what he's doing, doesn't he? <laughs> he's, he's missed some of the fundamentals there, to be honest. He's not really <laughs> going to get very, very far like that. Uh, it's the latest scheme for Bob, who wants 10,000 people to sail to France and pick up protesters keen to join the march to Edinburgh on July the 3rd. Are they going in over there just to pick up the duty-free for Live 8? Is that the <laughs> <laughs> He just sent one ferry over, for Christ's sake. I, um, did he tell the French anything about this plan? I don't think he's told anyone about anything that he says at all. It's just <laughs> as it comes to him... It just pops into his head every week, like last week. Mm, a million. Walk to Edinburgh. That's what we do. And this week, <laughs> and sail across this river. Like next week, okay, everyone on one leg. Everyone on the island on one leg. Right. <laughs> right. All go down to the Isle of Wight. I've always wondered if that's true. Everyone to the Isle of Wight. We're going. <laughs> so when you get people like Phil Collins on the telly going, just two thousand pounds is all we need to feed this village. I just think, well, bloody give it to them. <laughs> 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 Speaking as a country that actually had at one stage, and obviously not in living memory, but we had a famine. If you guys had turned around 150 years ago and recorded a charity record for the middle of the Irish potato famine, we would have been deeply insulted by the effort. <laughs> Do they know it's Christmas? No, we have other priorities at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always really pissed off. Because you used to be able, there was a there was a time when you could get Irish themed crisps. And what, I was, was always it? upset me, there were only three in a packet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, laugh. Laugh at the pain, rich English man. Uh, <laughs> yes. You have such a landowner's head in you as well. Uh, <laughs> right here. Do I owe you rent in any way? <laughs> <laughs> I've, um, I've actually got a friend I think has got the right attitude towards charity, cos when that Feed the World single came out, I said to her, have you bought that? She went, no, I've taped it off a friend. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, it's expected that the flotilla of boats sailing from France to Britain will help change the lives of Africans, not to mention the lives of Albanians clinging to the hull. <laughs> Okay, Joe, which category would you like? Mm, I'd like international news, please, Dara. Okay, international news. The answer is a corpse. What is the question? Is it, is it what came second to Anne Widdicombe in a poll of things we'd least like to sleep with? <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, what medical students use if they can't find a frisbee? <laughs> 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 or, or a friend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is it if you live in the small television village of Midsummer, what will you soon be? <laughs> um, is it what's Michael Jackson come as? <laughs> is it, so who's 11 10 favourite to win the Conservative leadership race? <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, what do you call a small area of woodland in Glasgow? <laughs> Is Very it good. what do you find in a small area? <laughs> <laughs> Is it what will improve celebrity Love Island? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you the only reality show I want to see Find Osama. Twelve minor celebrities get sent to <laughs> Afghanistan. <laughs> I'll give you a clue um, on this one. A corpse is the answer. It's because of a rejection. This has to be what um, Liam Fox is now the... Is he Shadow Foreign... Shadow Foreign Secretary, Secretary yes. They're so shadowy, this lot, don't you? I mean, I don't know half of these Shadow Conservative I Cabinet... Oh, I don't think Michael Howard does. He says, I don't care, they're in the dark, nobody will know. <laughs> <laughs> right, you, have you ever done anything in public life? Now's your chance. <laughs> and Liam Fox he used to be a doctor, and he said, he said, I used to be a doctor, and I look at the European Constitution, and I know a corpse when I see one. That's exactly what he said, yes. Dr Fox, the Shadow Foreign Secretary, told Jack Straw in the mm. Commons this constitution is a case for the morgue. He urged the government to abandon plans for a referendum. Dr Liam Fox said, I may no longer practice medicine, but I can tell a corpse when I see one. At which point, Michael Howard grinned nervously and scurried back to his coffin. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on to the next round, but I think the winner in that one is difficult to judge, but I think Andy Frankie, Andy Frankie. Points for Andy and Frankie. This next round, we call it Prime Minister's Questions. For the purposes of this game, I'll be the Speaker of the House of Commons. Rory, you're going to take the role of Tony Blair. Joining you on the front benches are Mark and Andy as your Labour colleagues. Joe, Hugh and Frankie, you are members of the opposition. You'll be taking a small story, but treating as if it's the heavyweight issue of the week. To start, I'd like to ask the Prime Minister to give his statement on the government's reaction to the news that Kevin the monkey has escaped from his cage in Belfast Zoo following a dispute with his father. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, news has only just reached us of this, uh, of this event. I'm sure that members of the Ulster Constabulary are currently uh, combing the area for Kevin. Uh, we hope to announce that uh, shortly. I haven't, I haven't finished yet. Uh, <laughs> as I said to Gordon, I haven't finished yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll do our best to recapture him. Uh, in the meantime, the police are doing a wonderful job. Here! Here! Can I just say... Sit down or I'll smash your face in, you Tory <laughs> Here! Can I just uh, say sorry, that the, this... The, the, the Deputy Prime Minister makes his point in his own way and I agree with his sentiments. <laughs> Can I just say that this whole <laughs> monkey escape incident, which the uh, Prime Minister has drawn a veil over, really, involved some terrible behaviour on behalf of the monkey. And does it not just point up the paucity of his policy of ASBOs, the antisocial baboon orders? <laughs> <laughs> Will the Prime Minister please serve an ASBO? Or, or at least give him a banana? <laughs> I have to say, no. I have to say we will be using food, uh, in this case bananas, and we hope to arrest him soon. In fact, shortly we hope that the uh, animal in question will be enjoying bananas in custody. <laughs> In Belfast, in Belfast, isn't there a very real danger that this monkey will get its hands on a drum, join the Orange Order, <laughs> and blend seamlessly into society? 
Listen, in as much as that has with the orangutan and baboons within which the primates to which the right honourable gentleman has within this policy referred, I refer thee to the referment with that good Prime Minister has honourably referred to on the day before. Thank you. <laughs> so much thank you so much for mentioning primates this party has developed uh, primate gagging advice or as we like to call it PG tips <laughs> <laughs> yes Scott what about the rumor that this monkey is in fact your mother-in-law <laughs> In as much as relatively within that the Prescott family name has been undertaken to be put <laughs> forward and rescinded within that which the monkeys not within excluding those of the baboon fraternity, I refer the Prime Minister to the excellent work that he has done over the last 243 minutes. <laughs> I have one very simple question. What the f*** are you on about? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the winner has to be Mark on that game. <laughs> Time to move on to another round. This one is called Dating Videos. The players take on the identity of a famous newsmaker and record a Lonely Hearts video in the style of that person. Everyone else has to try and guess who they are. Frankie, you're up first. If you could take it away there. Take your position in the performance area. <clears throat> Hello. I'm the sort of woman that a lot of men fantasise about in bed <laughs> to stop themselves from coming. <laughs> I, I describe my look as clown having a heart attack. <laughs> now, I do a lot of work for charity, and yes, it is very tiring, but who can afford to turn down that kind of money? <laughs> I've got a personal guru who helps me out with astrology and feng shui. Apparently, the whole reason for the Iraq war was that I had my armchair too close to the patio doors. <laughs> I, I can't talk too much about my appearance because I'm locked in a battle over image rights with the makers of Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> Beautifully done, Frankie. I throw it open to the, uh, the teams here. Who was that? Is it the Bishop of St Albans? <laughs> <laughs> it's... <laughs> I, I think we know, don't we? Yeah, I think you yeah. do. Sherry Blair. It's I Sherry think. Blair. Well done, Frankie. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> OK, Hugh. Hugh, you're up next. Wander over to our chair there in the performance area to do for us your dating video. Let's see your plea for love. Hi. <laughs> I am Australasius Thuggius Maximus. <laughs> Holder of a broken telephone. <laughs> Possessor of an uncontrollable temper. <laughs> and I will have my call connected. <laughs> I need you to help me find my feminine side. And when you do, you can keep it. I don't want the bloody thing. <laughs> they say that uh, my aggression stopped me winning an Oscar, which I regret, because they look nice and heavy. You could hit someone really hard. <laughs> <laughs> so come on, get in touch. I'll give you a call. In fact, I'll give you the whole bloody telephone. <laughs> Uh, passing it open. Who is it? It's your man, Russell Crowe. He was, of course, Russell Crowe. Well done. Good mind you. Sit down. Difficult to say what about him. He took the risk of an arm. Now we come to our final round, one called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see. And the performers come in with their suggestions. Right. Here we go. The first subject is unsettling things to hear in the White House. Uh, as your doctor, Mr. Bush, I can assure you you are fit and healthy. <laughs> Does your cigar taste a bit funny? 
So let me get this straight. We're handing over the management of the Star Wars Missile Protection Program to Rail Track. <laughs> oh, that. That's a map of Iran. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the president here, me or you? It's me. Shit! <laughs> no, 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 Saddam. I love you too. Come on, Tony. Keys in the bowl. <laughs> Welcome, President Schwarzenegger. <laughs> there we go. Okay, our next topic is discarded titles for the next Harry Potter book. Harry Potter is thrown in jail for wearing a hood. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Wet Dream. <laughs> Captain Corelli's Mandolin. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter and the Mudblood Prince in a Nazi uniform. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Harry Potter does Dallas. <laughs> Red hot muggle on muggle action. <laughs> Harry Potter and the child actor's inevitable mental breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter and the prisoner of Abu Ghraib. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter and the two other kids who can't act. <laughs> Okay, let's go to the next topic. Uh, things you shouldn't say to the Queen on being given your honour. How did you kill Diana? <laughs> I eat corgis. <laughs> Where's that racist twat? Is he around anywhere? <laughs> Oh, that reminds me, I must post that letter. <laughs> Could you sign this for me? I'll make much more on eBay. <laughs> Ma'am, you have no idea how much pussy this is going to get me. <laughs> <laughs> that's him, that's him. I think the winner was Frankie. Every sit down. That's the end of the show.